Welcome to Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective podcast, where we meet experts from all walks of life to learn their intrinsic motivation so that they can share it with the world. What do we have in store today? Stay tuned to find out more. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in podcast land. This is another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza. And I am David. And I could not wait for today to happen. Uh, The guest we have today is near and dear to my heart. I've known her over 15 years. We were both in the industry, the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. And I let go of my golden handcuffs back in 2009. And (laughs) she actually just ripped off her band-aid for her golden handcuffs. And she has an amazing story. So without further ado, without stealing her thunder, I'd love to welcome Lee and Stuart to the podcast. Welcome. Thank you, Hamza and David. Um, I don't know. Where do I start? Do you want, you, are you going to ask me questions or am I just going to start talking? Absolutely. We have a ton of questions for you. Okay, good. good. And so before we get started, uh, I did mention that you were in the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. And yes. uh, what what capacity did you work, and how did you get into the industry in the first place? Uh, so um, I was in the industry for probably over 15 years. I started out in interior design, commercial interior design. And then um, I did that for four years, like burning the midnight oil, making no money, and just wasn't fulfilled with that. And um, a few years later, moved into sales within the industry, within the design and um, construction industry, um, and furniture sales, commercial furniture sales, and um, worked for a company, a dealer for nine years one of the top dealer one of the top dealers and also um selling the one of the top manufacturers in the world um product and did that for nine years um stressful always something going wrong (laughs) with everything and um and then in the meantime had two kids and then after nine years of being a sales um, rep at the dealer level, then went on to um, land a, a really great position, sales position with a, another top manufacturer, but on the manufacturer level, not the dealer level. Um, and I did that for two and a half years until recently in December, I left that job. Okay. Now, that, before we go into you leaving, and that's fine, I, I just wanted to set, and I also want to set another framework in that prior to your sales positions, you were more so in the office. I, I'd like to, to uncover what a typical day like is in both instances. So what it was at the dealer? Yeah, when you, before you had gotten in your sales position way back when, what oh, was it Oh, as like? a designer. Exactly. So it was like, you know, of course you thought, oh, I'm going to be an interior designer. It's going to be this great, sexy job, <laughs> you know. I'm going to make a ton of money. And, um, but really, I mean, it, it, was, it was still fun, um, but it was just too much work and too many deadlines for one person. And so I was constantly just finding myself in front of the computer drafting or you know, space planning and specking furniture and, and that sort of thing. And um, it just wasn't what I really loved to do. I liked the, the, the meeting with the clients um, and, you know, the big picture design, but I didn't want, I, I quickly learned that I wasn't going to make it doing all the tedious work sitting in front of the computer all day. I wanted to be around people. I wanted to, you know, that's when I realized I probably, you know, maybe sales might be, um, you know, what I was meant to do. But, um, but at that job, I, you know, I worked so hard. I was very proud of my work and, um, you know, I, I put it before everything, before my health, before everything. 
I would work on the weekends. I would take work home. I'd work, you know, till three o'clock in the morning to finish deadlines. I mean, that's how much I was working, probably 70 hours a week. Wow. Doing that job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to highlight that because, you know, everyone has different strengths. And so some, some people would be happy with what you just highlighted, like, oh, my goodness, that's my dream job. And for you, right. you were able to kind of get in it and realize that uh, what we talk about a lot is um, how contrast in life will give you a clarification of what you really want. So, it's, so, the uh-huh. con- so the contrast is actually really good and it should be welcomed from time to time. And so you made the transition into sales. So what was that, what was a typical day like as a sales rep? So um, then I quickly learned that um, the sales rep position wasn't what I thought it was going to be either. (laughs) (laughs) That that was a lot of um, in front of the computer and, you know, doing all the tedious work. And I just was confused by it all. And, it you know, and for a while, you know, I just thought it was a job. And then I didn't know if it was just me. But then I looked around and there wasn't enough support. So basically it was you're selling and you're also doing all the other work behind it because there wasn't enough support. Um, so I, you know, I did that for nine years um, because I was making really great money after a while and I kind of could do my own thing. I was still basically in front of the computer all day and I basically be- became a project manager. I would go out, get the business and then bring it in, but nobody was there to work the business for me, so I would have to work it. And then once I was finished with that, then I could get back out and get more business, so it was kind of like that. And what I loved about that job was the going out and getting the business. I didn't love the fact of sitting down in front of the computer after getting the business to do all the work afterwards. I wanted to just keep getting business, keep getting business working with people, talking with people, meeting new people. Um, And so then when I was approached by, and I was also working crazy hours with this job too, because it was just insane, the amount of work and the amount of um, deadlines and, you know, trying to make everyone happy. So that was also um, a lot of hours put in. you know, at the detriment to my health and happiness and everything like that. But I just kept going because I thought that's what I needed to do. So when I was approached by a recruiter for another company, I thought, oh, this is, this is what I need. This is on the manufacturer side. I'm going to just be going out, getting the business, going out, getting the business and not getting, you know, not getting tied down with all of the, um, with all the details of the projects, right? And so that excited me. I could be around people. I, this is what I do. I'm going to be the brand ambassador. I'm going to, you know, um, just really get to use my personality and and that and use my strengths. So um, after a while, though, quickly it became into other other than that um, at the new job. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, So it was, okay, now it was everyone around you that that wasn't being supported, like at the dealer, and then you, and then I was, I was made to support that instead of just going out what I was hired to do, getting business, going out, um, networking, and building that business. It was now here I am back trying to support the dealership who's struggling. Um, so I don't know. That's kind of where I was at and I was not happy because there again, I'm in front of the computer and I'm doing things that, you know, wasn't really hired to do in my opinion, as far as sales. Like when you think of sales, you think of go out, get the business and then somebody else will take care of it from there. Right. Yeah. Um, so that really wasn't what was happening. So, um, what else can I, I talk about? I don't want to keep, I don't keep, want to keep rambling. <laughs> no, no, you're not at all. You're actually okay. saying what I really liked. I wanted to paint a really good foundation because, uh, especially 
since around, you know, the correction of the mid-2000s. Uh, a lot of people have been in positions where traditionally they may have had one role, but with yes. the economy going through a correction, you are hired as one position, but, you know, while you're here, let's see how much we can maximize your efforts, and now you're wearing multiple hats. Yeah, like way too many hats, and that's how it's right. been at every job I've ever had. Mm-hmm. Right. But, right. And, that, and that's, I wanted to highlight that because, you know, you're fresh out of the golden handcuffs, and we're going to get to that because you have a wonderful story, in my opinion. But every, everybody's story is different. And so, mm-hmm. you know, when people would speak to someone like myself, I'm an individual, right, it, you know, without the uh, responsibilities that other people like yourself would have with children, a husband, and what have you, and, and juggling just the day to day. So I wanted to have some resonance with our audience of, you know, that are still in the trenches that they may be thinking, is there something else out there or, or is this my lot in life? And so, right. That was what I was questioning. Like, this can't be my life. This can't be, um, you know, what I'm doing. I'm going to work every day, working so hard, coming home, taking care of the kids, doing laundry, cleaning, cooking, you know, then going to bed and then waking up to do it all over again the next day. And it's exhausting. Right. And you're like, this is what my life is. I'm just here to work a job um, and have no fulfillment in life. Um, But because I need money, you know, because everybody needs money, you know, and I was like, this isn't what I just kept thinking. This isn't really what we're put on this earth to do. I don't believe. Yeah. So. Uh Or do something that you're unhappy doing. Yeah, I guess we've all probably been there saying, is this all there is? <laughs> this can't yeah, be like, all there is. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> so, yeah, it was just, it became an awareness that would not go away. Like this awareness that this isn't right. This isn't my life. I'm this, I'm not going to let this be my life, you know, and what else can I do? So it was like a, a good year of, of that in my head and being aware and then becoming very aware before yeah. I made, made the decision. But. So, so like a, a, a home, having more purpose, you could probably say. Right. And what's yeah. interesting is that there are, a, uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, there are people at the end of their days that, you know, they have regrets, like, I wish I would have done that. So, you know, there are a lot of people that are going to, and that's why I was really excited to speak with you today, Leanne, because uh, from a homie's perspective, there, there's a saying, or there's a song by Most Def, and he, he had said that um, there's a straw that broke the camel's back, but here's the secret, there was a thousand other straws underneath it. And yeah. so was there a defining moment where you were just like, you know what, this has been resonating in the back of my head that I need to change, but this particular instance is, is a lightning rod for you. Did that happen? Um, like when, when, I, when I knew what I needed to do or yeah, I mean, like, it was like a, it was like a, it was a good two months of really digging in, um, like soul searching and this might sound lame, but I was like, stay, I couldn't sleep because of this knocking, you know, this, this awareness. Right. And then I ha- I couldn't ignore it. I mean, and I couldn't sleep. Right. Um, because I knew I was like, I, I want purpose in life. I want to make a difference in the world. I don't want to be in the rat race. It's not me. I'm meant to do greater things in life. And I'm meant, I'm, I want to be happy. I want to be happier as a mom, as a friend, as a wife, um, and not necessarily in those orders. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, so I just was so much struggling with this revolution. I was, like, going through, like, revolting against, like, everything in society that we've been taught, right? I'm like, this isn't it. This isn't it. But what could it be? Is so I was up all night, and then I could try to go back to sleep, couldn't. So then I was like reading books instead of just laying there. So then I started reading books like The Four Agreements and The Big Leap and Choose Different and things like that, like self development type books. 
And then I started getting into documentaries, um, self-development documentaries, or just like random documentaries of people just completely living out of the norm of society. And that really resonated with me. Like, um, I don't know if you want examples or if you want me to. Yeah, give an example. An example would be a movie or a documentary called Surfwise that really inspired me. Um, I, you would look it up. I don't know if we have time to totally get into it, but I loved that lifestyle and I, I long for that lifestyle because I, I really, it's a, it's a unconventional way of living, you know, not going to school, not going to work, you know, living life. And I think about, so, you know, and there were other ones like um, given, and it was a similar story, a couple with a baby, you know, and they decided to quit the mainstream life and go back and live into this um, jungle where he grew up, you know, living life like at the very beginning. And I think that's, you know, I'll keep thinking that this is what we, this is how we need to live. You know, we've turned into such monsters, you know, we've turned into, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, into everything we shouldn't be um, in life. So all these documentaries, documentaries were like validating those feelings that I was having and showing me that there's not just one, um, one way to live life. Like you can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to live, you don't have to have the house with the white picket fence or, you know, keep up with the Joneses and have the nice cars and the, you know, I, I've never been into that. Um, but I've found myself into that, you know, find myself living a life that I didn't want to live. Um, minimalism was another documentary, you know, it was about two guys who started this movement, really a movement. And I was like, I'm on this movement. <laughs> with you guys before I even saw this. Right. And so it was that they quit their corporate jobs to, because they, they were going through the same thing I was going through. Like this can't be it. So while I thought I would, you know, maybe I was the only one or what was wrong with me, you know, am I a loser? Am I, am I lazy? Am I, you know, what's wrong with me? You know, but really I was validated in the fact that there's nothing wrong with me, that there's a lot of other people that are out there feeling the same way that I'm feeling and, you know, they've, they've found a way to figure it out. So then it was like, okay, now you're validated. Now you've gotten this awareness and you know what you need to do. Now you need to figure out how to do it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was then their a next step. You know, because I'm not, I don't know, things don't come easy to me, I guess. You know, so I'm still, I'm still in, I'm still in all of this, right? I still haven't found all are. through. Right. <laughs> okay. But I see here I am thinking I'm the only one, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm not because you just validated that. <laughs> yeah. So... So then it was in the next step of trying to figure it out. And I don't know how, how we want to go to that because I'm still trying to figure it out, but I'm on. Yeah. Well, I, I want to go to, I think before I go there, David had another question. No, okay. no, no. I was just, I was looking actually up the minimalism. It looks like a real interesting documentary. <laughs> uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome. Watch the documentary and get on their website and blog. And they're just amazing because of the way that their perspective on everything. It's almost like that choose different book perspective, Hamza, that I asked you to read, you know, and mm-hmm. kind of the same perspective that, that Hamza, because I know Hamza, um, in my life, he's kind of who I aspire to be like as well, you know, with the right, the right attitude, the right, um, the right way to live the, well, I wouldn't say the right way to live, you know, per se, but um, the way that I want to live um, and with integrity, with love and with meaning and purpose and um, with by design, right? Right. 
So that's why we love doing these podcasts because you know there's a, the back and forth. We get to learn so much. Like in this case, the documentaries, and I, and I do want to point you to one of our earlier podcasts. We we, we did a, a series on um, the concept of sleep and hypersleep and different variations. And we found that, or I, I won't speak for data, but just in my personal experience, that that is a really recharging moment where, you know, you may be fixated on a, a problem during your waking life or what have you, but when you go to sleep at night and kind of let go and, and you know, step away from it for a second, it's miraculous where you may get these new ideas in, in the next day or during your work day the next day without you really tr- efforting. And so there's mm-hmm. some people like that are in that, uh, I don't want to say rat race, but like just running on that treadmill and they're not getting enough sleep. They're having a lot of stress because of the, the, the stresses and the uh, things they need to do day to day just for work and outside mm-hmm. of work that they're not able to step back. So, you know, I, I want to right. applaud you in your, in your early path on getting there. And uh, I do want to talk about Thank you. how it actually happened around November, December, where, uh, what was going on in your mind, and, and how did you actually take that extra leap of faith? Um, well, so I, you know, I just started, you know, you know, like I said, I just kind of had all these new influences, the books, the documentaries, and just the self-talk that, I, you know, the change of self-talk that was, um, you know, inside of me, and, um, and the awareness and the pool and getting back to myself. Um, so it was like, I'm, I need to find myself again. I need to get back to myself. So it was like this whole thing of me, you know, really working on that, working on myself and trying to find this path and trying to, you know, really make sense of it all. What was going on? And I, you know, I call it, you know, was it a midlife crisis? I don't know. Cause I was about to turn 40 in January and I was really unhappy and knew that I needed to make a change. So um, I just kept, you know, praying. I kept meditating. I kept trying to really dig in and not, you know, and just find, you know, find something inside me that would just give me the answer, right? So I just started becoming aware of everything, messages around me, and things started to really unfold, kind of like those God wink, the God wink thing that you told me about, Hamza. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that was another thing. After you and I, you and I had met, and I was going through a really hard time with all, with just everything that was going on. Um, and you, and I was like, you know, there are certain things that are happening to me, and I'm just not believing it, right? Um, and you said, well, it's the God wink, and. And so I, um, I read that or listened to that and, um, and just, it was like, yeah, you need to just be aware of the messages that are being given. If you just open your, your mind and heart and everything to it, then it will come. And so somehow, some way I, you know, have been using, um, essential oils And, you know, just as, you know, I enjoyed using essential oils, not like full blown or, you know, really crazy about them, but just using them and really enjoyed them and loved the way they made me feel and the way they brought me back to myself. So I started saying like, you need to touch in, you know, tap into that, right? Start tapping into the things that make you happy and the things that are bringing you to your, your true being and your true self. And so um, I just started, you know, for some reason, it was like the essential oils. The essential oils is what is, is helping me to, um, to, to dig into everything that I needed to, you know, whether it was meditation or um, awareness or stopping and enjoying the moment, you know, it was like smelling the oils, putting the oils on me. And, um, and I guess I'm always been kind of like a hippie at heart. And that kind of sounds strange to some people about like, Oh, essential oils made you feel a certain way or, you know, heal the skin issue or whatever. But I really truly believe that. And they do work in that way for me and for a lot of others. And, and that was really my, one of my stepping stones to, um, really getting the courage and getting myself back 
to my true self. Um, and then ultimately finding out I could, you know, get into this business of essential oils and, um, and I could, you know, make my life better um, and do what I wanted to do with these essential oils. Not only were they helping me personally, but now they could, you know, also help me um, financially and help maybe, you know, design, help design the life that I want. And we're going to dive into the oil in a second, but I do, because there are two, and I know these stories, that's why I'm going to try to lead you to it. So. No, 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 I, want, I need help. <laughs> I'm so, always looking uh, for Hamza to help me, guys. Okay, <laughs> he's, all, he's, he's he's my person. <laughs> so, so help me, I do Hamza. Wanna, help me, help me. So, okay, <laughs> you taking me up. All right, so I do want to go into the scenario. I think it is so important for our audience to hear about. Uh, the relationship with um, your boss in that uh, you're, you, you, you have these inklings that, you know, has really come to a head for over 15 years. Like, you know what, I can't keep living this life. You have an introduction to oils. And now you're looking at, hey, you know what, I might want to make a move. And so what was the conversation like to your superiors of even thinking <laughs> about making a move? Um, well, so... So I, I guess this. You want me to talk about like the end? Yeah, I think it's or important. Or leading, or leading up to the end. Leading up to it because there's a lot of people over the past year that we've interviewed, and you know they they are a couple of years removed, but this is so fresh. Yeah, it's you. pretty fresh still because I still think about it, and I'm still learning from it. I'm learning from the situation, and I'm learning from the reaction that I had, and and the way that I dealt with it. Um, and I'm not, you know, it's, it's not right or wrong. It just was, you know, it was for me at that time. And so by, by all this self self development that I was doing all this, you know, attention on myself that I was giving, which I think is so important, soul keeping and really, you know, um, you know, taking care of yourself which I was doing and really becoming aware of myself and what I wanted and getting my confidence back and getting all that back was coming back to me because I had been really knocked down. My boss was, I could never make her happy um, no matter what I did and everything she asked for I did and it still wasn't good enough. And so I felt like such a failure. I was very, you know, self beaten up, you know, by others and by myself mainly because of the environment that I was in. Um, and plus I really, you know, I really take pride in what I do. And, um, so that really hurt that I just wasn't good enough, you know? Um, but I knew that I was good enough. So it was starting to become like, you know, Hey, F you, I am good enough and I am doing all the right things and you're just an asshole. Can I say that? (laughs) I don't know if I can say that. We love raw emotion. <laughs> so that's basically all I'm about is raw emotion. And that, and this will tell you why. I mean, this will explain, you know, that because I had just gotten to the point where I was going to do what I had to do to be happy. I was going to, um, you know, try and keep this job because I was working on all these great accounts. And I was like right at the tail end of, you know, getting this one account that I've been working so hard to get. And this was all the self-doubt that I had, the self-doubt that everyone was putting on me as well, that they didn't think I was going to, you know, accomplish um, and, and win the project that I had been, you know, waiting to, you know, hear if did we win for two years. We've been working on it. And I had just put my heart and soul into it. Um, and, um, and I had all this self-doubt, you know, like you're not good at this. You know, nobody believes in you. You don't believe in yourself. You're not doing the right things. Um, But then I started to turn that around and be like, you are doing the right things. You are good enough. You are going to get this project. You are. And so I became, started to become happier in my position because of my thought change, right? 
but mm-hmm. nobody else around me. And I was trying to explain this to my superior, to my manager, that, you know, hey, I'm on a good path here. And at that point, it still wasn't good enough for her, you know. Um, and I was just like, you know, I need more time now because now I'm, I really feel like I've tapped into something good here. And, you know, um, and I, if I win this project, then we've got this. And, and so I'm, I'm saying I've got this lined up and I'm all excited because um, of this and this. And it was not good enough. Sitting in her office was just like, you know, just the most negative thing happening. And I was like, what in the world? You know, here I am doing all the right things and, you know, on this right path. And, um, and she had known I'd been struggling with, you know, with just life in general. And she was supportive to a point, but then, you know, there becomes a point, you know, where they want you, they want you to do what they want you to do and work the crazy hours and, you know, do all the things where I was like, I need to take care of myself and my family and then also work, you know, now the but point, I was, the point I want to highlight is that for, for those listening in is that it's pretty typical for the industry uh, sales cycle to be 18 up to 60 months of yeah. prospecting and nurturing relationships and so on and so forth. So for, um, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Did you win that job that you were going after for two years? Yeah. So two years. So I'll, so, so I'll, I'll get into that in just one second and I'll tell you this was the end after I had struggled so hard and I just like still kept getting knocked down by my, by my boss and she, you know, lost belief in me. And even though I knew I was doing all the right things, she didn't believe that I was. Um, and so I just asked her, I said, well, what is it that you want from me? You know, I don't know what else to give you in that office, in her office on our biweekly one-on-one. And I just was like, what is it that you want then? You know, and I just was kind of had this real huge, you know, I didn't even care anymore. I did. I was like, whatever I had, it, I was called it the case of the ethics because okay. I really had the case of the ethics. I was like, I am not, you know, I'm a good person. I'm not going to take this anymore. And I'm not going to, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm working hard. I'm just not, you're just not seeing it or you're not, it's not on your terms. It's on my terms. And that's what I was hired to do, build a business on my terms, right? Um, now, the part I want to highlight that I, I really like, and I, I definitely want to stay there for a second, because we do, when I get into the oils and the next steps, um, is that when I, I may mention to it earlier about people in that, you know, they're left at the end of their lives and having regrets and so on and so forth. And here you are in an environment where you, you've done everything that you needed to do. Um, you've kind of superseded uh, maybe your own expectations. And you actually had won a job that you had fought for for two years beating out local competitors. Some other people would have said, you know what, maybe that was my God link. I, I, I worked hard enough. I got that business and I'm going to stay in this job. What was it? I mean, because you left even after all of that work, what was your mind state? Um, and we want to focus more on your perception as opposed to uh, your bosses. Um, well, so I, so I, I basically quit that day in her office. This was like three days before I won the project. So Man, that let was. You, let me ask you one quick question. You said that you were in the office and you kept you asked her a few times, "What is it exactly that you want from me?" Did she give you an yeah. answer to this? Yeah, she gave me a real shitty answer, which was, um, "You, I want." She was like, "I, you know, I want to see you in the office um, all the time." I'm in outside sales and she just didn't, because I wasn't telling her everything that I was doing, you know, she decided she wanted to micromanage and because she couldn't see everything in numbers because I'd only been there for two years. And like Hamza was saying, there's, there's a ramp up period. Um, and so what, what was happening was everything, all the self doubt, everything I was doing was the right thing. And it just was 
like not given the chance. And, and so I, and it was at my breaking point. And so, um, and I just said, fine. Like she said, she wanted me to be in the office from nine to five every day. That was her way, I guess, to push me out or to push me to something. I don't know. And I just said, no. I was like, no, that's not going to work for me. And she, she just said, what? And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and, um, you know, said, what do you want to do? You know, I'm not going to do that. So what do you want to do? It was like, what do you mean? I was like, what do you mean? I said, I'm, you're my manager and I'm your, you know, salesperson. I'm telling you, I'm not going to do what you're asking me to do, you know? <laughs> and so I said, so what do you want to do about that? And she was like, well, um, well, maybe you ought to start looking for another job. And I was like, all right. Sounds Brilliant. good. <laughs> and I said, that sounds like a great idea. I said, so um, what does that mean? What do you want to do? She was like, what do you mean? And I said, uh, well, I'm sitting here telling you that I'm not going to do what you're asking me to do and that I will be looking for another job. So do you want me to stay? You know, do you want me to leave right now? Do you want me to stay two weeks? Do you want me to stay until I find another job? Like, what do you want? And she did, I mean, she just was like totally caught off guard. She yeah, thought she was going to bully me into doing whatever she wanted me to do, yeah. like she had always done. And I just was like, no, you know? And um, so I just, she goes, well, I guess two weeks. And I said, okay, great, two weeks. <laughs> and Three I wanted days to thank later. You, thank you. What? I said, thank you. That's what I actually wanted to, to uncover or have you uncover in the podcast because for those listening outside of the country or listening outside of our country of Georgia, it's a right to work state. So if they don't want you there for whatever reason, the way you dress or your color of your hair, you could be dismissed that day. So with you and no fault, yeah, no um, fault. Yeah. Right. No fault state. And you had, you had called her bluff. She had tried to use a fear tactic and you had rose and above that. Right. About that. Right. Okay. Right. Because I didn't right. care. And I knew, I knew all that was at stake and I still didn't care. I was reaching for my happiness. I was reaching for my health. I mean, like, like I, it was all the tips of my fingers and, and it was like all along, I knew I was doing the right things and I was also doing it on my terms, which she didn't like, but I was still doing the job, but I was still you know, leaving at two, you know, I was still like, I wasn't working a t- full time at the end because I'd said, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not, I'm going to work when I can work and I'm going to work around my life. I'm not going to work my life around this job. Yeah. And so I found a way to make it work, which was, you know, totally empowering and great for me, but it wasn't for her. Um, because she wanted to see me more. She wanted to know what I was doing and why wasn't I there all the time. And, you know, and here I am working on a $10 million project that I won three days later. And that's where the F I was, Mm -hmm. you know, and then I'm also taking care of myself and my family and my home and my, you know, what I like to do in life, not just work. Right. So it was just, it was just a, it was just a, a, a moment of, I don't care how much money I'm leaving on the table. And it was, I don't know if it was like an ego thing or just like a, like I had to prove something or I didn't care or whatever. I just was like, no, I'm done. I'm I don't here. care. And I trust that whatever is going to happen is for, is going to be fine. Like yeah. I just wasn't even worried. I wasn't worried that, oh my gosh, I don't have an income, you know, I, I was the one making more money than my husband, you know? So I had to, you know, go home, break the news to my husband. And I wasn't even worried. I was like, I'm not even worried because I'm a good person. I will work hard. I will do whatever it takes, but I'm also not going to do live that life anymore. I'm going to live it by design on my own terms and be successful. And that's what's happening. And that's what I'm doing. And, and it was so liberating <laughs> and so freeing. Um, but also it was like the world telling me when I, when they called me to say three days later after I had quit my job, 
um, that you won this project and it was because of you. It was because of all the effort and the time and the heart and soul you put into us. You won this project hands down. It was you. And that was just like the world telling me, you know, you self doubted yourself. You can do anything in the world you want to do, you know? Um, and it was just the validation that I needed and the confidence that I needed to just keep going and knowing that the decisions that I was making, I wasn't second guessing myself anymore. It was just like, you have this feeling inside, you can't ignore it. And you are smart enough. You are good enough. You are, you know, whatever enough. And, and listen to yourself. You're, you can make the right decision. You know, you don't have to second guess your decision. You have a feeling, you decide to make a decision, that's the right decision. Go for it. Do it. Trust it because you're good enough. You know, I don't know. We always look at, we always look at uh, synergies and God winks and interconnectedness. And and what we found or continue to find, you know, it's a day-to-day thing, is that we have a tendency to compartmentalize, like, this is my work life, this is my family life. I hang out with these type of friends on Tuesday and another type of friends yep. on Thursday. I'd like for you to talk about the opportunity you had come across and how it was able to cross worlds in your old existing commercial interior design world because you actually had made some sales that you didn't think was going to happen because it was a different world. Um, are you talking about with my new venture? Yes. Um, so what the opportunity is that I have now with this new venture. Yeah. So, um, now with what I'm doing now, I've decided to pursue, um, you know, and, and, and I will say on a side note that I'm contacted daily through LinkedIn, um, by recruiters and other companies in our industry to get back into the industry. Mm Um, and, and I know in my heart, I don't want that, but it's all I know, right? So, but I know that it's not for me and it's, you know, it's where I can make money um, off the bat. I can, you know, get another six figure job if I wanted to, um, I guess. I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, say anything, you know, who knows, but I'm having those offers, right? Um, and so, but what I really um, passionate about is my new venture, which is um, doTERRA. And doTERRA is, um, is Latin for gift of the earth. And they're a wonderful company that um, creates essential oils. And they're a multi-level marketing company. So it really, the sky's the limit. And it's the, my, the key to my, you know, living my um, dream is to not really start a company from scratch because I don't even really have any ideas. I keep, I mean, trust me, I've thought, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I want to be my own boss. You know, um, I don't want to work for anyone anymore. I want to make my own money. I want to be successful on my own terms. And, you know, like I said, live life by design and, and, you know, have it all, like you said, not be like compartmentalized, have it all just be harmonious. My work, my life, my friends, my everything is all encompassing, right? And that was what drew me to this business because it was something first that I was passionate about, the quality um, of the essential oils and just the essential oils and the benefits of them um, for me personally. And then how I could um, live life by design um, and tried to build financial freedom through this venture um, all the while also helping, you know, people all around the world, helping friends, family, um, better their health um, and, you know, maybe give them the opportunity to do what I'm doing, you know, and then also um, helping third world countries where a lot of the oils are, um, you know, where the plants are indigenous is where we get doTERRA gets the oils and helps all these, um, you know, struggling communities all around the world, in Africa and Haiti and Somalia and, um, you know, and also here in the United States. So it's just my way of helping myself, my family, um, and financially, and also making an impact on the world. So um, 
I feel like I'm finally, finally on the right path. And this feels so good, right? And I'd love for you to tell your validation about you had run across a sales rep about the opportunity and took her into your world of interior design. What, what, and what was your thought about even bringing her there and what transpired? Um, so when I, so when I um, decided, oh my gosh, I'm really interested in learning more about um, doTERRA as a business, and sharing the oils, right? And I wasn't thinking about, oh, I'm going to quit my job and do the oils. Um, but um, I came across, it was, like I said, it was like the God wink. And I came across, which I thought was the doTERRA website and said, yes, I'm interested in this business. Um, but it was really somebody's website, a doTERRA website as a, another advocate, a wellness advocate. Um, her website and she contacted me that night and then we talked the next morning and it was like everything was just starting to kind of like the universe was starting to open and everything was starting to fall into place and she was like um, I can come in she was like I can come into town in a couple weeks and you know you know teach you more about the oils and teach you about the business and show you how to share with your friends and your family and everyone around you so this was while I was still working um, in my industry, I thought, I want to share these oils with everyone because they make me feel amazing. I want everyone to feel amazing. You know, I'm so happy right now. And I, and this is just so fun, right? And this just feels good. It doesn't feel like work. It just feels like something that I want to do. <laughs> and, um, and so I brought, so my uh, business partner, Indoterra, Shana, came in from Denver and um, it was like a love connection, right? We had a love connection on the phone. And then when she came in town, it was like a love connection. And I brought her um, and she came and stayed for a few days. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to use this to my advantage um, and take her to clients, take her to my design firm and um, to the design firms that I was calling on and also clients. So I just wanted to bring everybody into it. So, you know, because I knew in this industry, everyone's stressed out. Everybody's got this pull, you know, to have a better life and to be healthy. And, you know, how, so this was my way of helping them. Right. And all the while kind of, you know, doing my job for the company that I was working for. And then also incorporating this new venture, right. That I was super passionate about and it was bringing passion to, just everything that I was doing in life. So, um, yeah, I was taking her. I w so we were taking the oils to my clients and to, um, like, the people that I was networking with in the industry. <clears throat> and at that point, when everyone was loving them, and I also brought them to my office, and everyone in the office loved them and bought them. Um, and then all my friends bought them and then wanted to join the business as well. So it was like this whole thing of, you know, all this happening. And then I was, you know, it's like, that was it. So that was the validation. I guess that was the whole, I kept, I kept, just kept saying, this is the universe opening up. This yeah. is, I don't know. Right. I don't know how else to say it without sounding, you know, whatever, but, um, but that's really, really what it was. So I'm still, you know, on that path. Is that, did that answer your question, Hamza? No, you did. It's about. just that um, you know. What, it, what am I? What am I missing? No, you're not. You're not missing anything at all. You, you, we did tennis really well. I put up a nice volley for you to slam it over the net, because you know <laughs> I wanted to highlight how, especially in our world or my former world or your former world now too. It's, you know, it's very conservative. It's very you know logical, logical steps. And here we're talking about God winks and letting go and things that you can't put on a, on a chart or a PowerPoint presentation of this is the projection and things were unfolding that you didn't even see. So it was just validation that letting go and letting the universe provide for you. Then, yes. You know, it's brought you to where you are today. So now I, I think you've had excellent answers. Definitely. And you just said it totally. That's, you know, and, and I want, and so it was kind of ballsy too. Um, you know, bringing, bringing this in too, because here I am in this conservative corporate world and I'm bringing essential oils and spirituality and 
whatever to you, but people were really buying into it because here's what I think. Here's what I believe is happening is everybody is thinking the way that we're thinking, you know, and, you know, they don't know um, what it is or how to tap into what it is that they need. And I want to help people tap into that because I was starting to, once I was opening up about my struggles and my story, people were coming out with their struggles and their stories. And it was all very similar. So I was like, what is going on in the world? It's like everybody I run into, no matter if they're 20 years old, 60 years old, 40, everybody is kind of like thinking we're all going in this wrong direction. Right. Yeah. And um, so it was like really validating, really eye opening that I wasn't, you know, I've always felt different from everyone. I've always felt in the end crowd, but I've always been the different one. I always was different outside, you know, I've always been outside the box, you know, more intellectual thinking, more deep thinking, um, more philosophical thinking. And really, um, you know, so I always thought I'm the only one who's thinking this. I'm the only you know person who doesn't want to work like this or live like mm-hmm. this, but really, truly everyone that I'm encountering, everyone that I'm talking to, it was wanting the same thing. But yet we keep still doing the same things that we've been doing for, you know, decades, um, you know, and it just keeps getting, you know, worse. Yeah. So anyway, that's my rant. <laughs> that's my rant. I'm sticking with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so is that, is that, is that it? Well, I have to ask, what's your, what's your, your favorite oil? My favorite oil? is frankincense frankincense yes it um, comes from somalia and um you know i will say that all the you know the difference between doTERRA oils and you know so, you know ones that you can buy off the shelf at like whole foods or even the grocery store even walmart you know they're not the quality they're not pure therapeutic grade like doTERRA they're not helping the world they're not, um, they're not doing everything doTERRA is doing. Um, and so frankincense with doTERRA, to me, you can get frankincense from another company and the smell and the quality and the way it makes you feel and the healing powers of it are completely different. So I would say my favorite doTERRA oil is frankincense and, um, for that because it's the king of all oils. It's, I'm not a super religious person, but it's been around since the beginning of time. I mean, you can hear it from the story of baby Jesus, right? Frankincense, mm-hmm. myrrh is another oil. Um, and so, you know, from the beginning of time that these plants have had powerful benefits, healing, spiritual, and, and I believe it. It's, I mean, I know it to be true. And so the why I love frankincense is because it is so ancient and is still, you know, being used today for feelings of peace, um, feeling of belonging, feeling um, of happiness, and also healing powers. It um, has cellular um, function, you know, it helps with your cellular function. So, Um, you know, just all these health benefits. Um, Also, it's great for your skin. So that's why I love it. There's so it's multi, you know, multi beneficial for so many things in your life. Um, Like I'm getting rid of my stretch marks from it. (laughs) (laughs) And my wrinkles from being 40. Um, And it's so I love it. It makes me so happy. So that's why. And so, I'm you also, also using Somalia. For, uh, for Jesus? I'm sorry. Are you also using the oil as a diffuser? Yeah. So I use the DoTerra oils because they are pure, the most pure. Um, they're 100% pure, um, other than any other ones on the market. Um, you can put them on your skin. You can take them internally, which I do, even with frankincense. Um, and also, um, you can diffuse them. So th- those three things um, I do for all the oils um, because, you know, like if you rub them on the bottom of your feet, it's going kind of directly into your bloodstream. It's kind of getting there the fastest way um, and also ingesting them um, too. 
so I wouldn't recommend doing that with any other brand but doTERRA. Um, and so, yeah, those are the three ways to use them. And I, um, and I, it's just the stepping stone also to bettering your life and bettering your health, in my opinion. So now, since I've started really getting in more into the oils and, um, and learning more about them, I and using them more um, and realizing the changes that I'm seeing in myself. I've lost 20 pounds because I'm also eating better. I'm also exercising. My stress level has gone down. Um, you know, so all these things um, began with the oils, and it was the stepping stone for me to take care of my health, and they are still the stepping stone every day for me and the reminder for me every day to take care of myself and to have peace and to love and to, um, you know, just do good in the world. So for all the fellow uh, type A persons like myself, I'm assuming that if I had bought some frankincense oil, I cannot drink a whole bottle of it the first time. So what is... <laughs> no. You should do that, hopefully, folks. Right. And so, so um, what is, uh, what is so your website so they can get in touch with you so you can actually inform them about all the benefits that they offer? So you can, so you can contact me um, via, can I just give my email address? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, doTERRA is the company, and you can look up information about doTERRA on www.doTERRA.com. You can email me with questions um, or if you're interested in learning more about um, getting the oils or building your business um, with the oils um, at Leanne, and that's L-E-I-G-H-A-N-N-E Stewart. S T E W A R T at Gmail dot com. Um, and I will be more than happy to send you any information and get in touch with you. We can um talk on um the phone, we can talk live, um, um like on um Skype and wherever you are in the country and um, learn more about them and learn the protocols because there, there are certain things that you should know about them. Like, you know, certain oils, like the frankincense, I'm not sensitive to it, but some people are, you said you would want to dilute it with um, a carrier oil, like fractionated coconut oil or grapeseed oil. Um, and there's recipes to follow, like three drops of this and three drops of this. You know, or if you're taking it internally, you want one drop with an eight ounce glass of water under your tongue, those kind of things. So um, there's a way to use them. And if you are interested in them, um, want to learn more, then I will help you every step of the way. Um, you're, you won't be alone in it. And, um, and I guarantee you will um, have a better life because What's of them. What's your Skype handle? My Skype handle? Uh-huh. I don't know. Oh, you said for people to get in touch with you on Skype. I was wondering if they... If oh, I would like set up. A, I would set that up. I don't okay. have like a automatic thing. I don't think. No I'm worries. not really good with the technology. No worries. Like so you right are. now primarily... Can you help me with that, Hamza? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Absolutely. You are not alone. That's what this whole hour was I uncovering. Know. Yeah, you're not alone. <laughs> I know. I love you. <laughs> so, okay. So that, that was perfect. And, and, and let's stay in touch and, and bring you back because this is so fresh. And I, and I was really excited to, to have someone on with such raw emotion to talk about. I mean, you are right in the trenches right now of going through yeah. this transformation. And yeah. so yeah. it would be great to kind of touch base with you, see how it's gone in your life, uh, you know, because it's gonna, about to go leaps and bounds beyond what you can imagine. So we'd love to uh, follow up Thank with you, you. as well. Thanks. Yes, I indeed. would love it. This has yes, been indeed. so much fun. I had no, I did not know what to expect, but this has been so much fun. I don't know why. We've never heard but, that before, David, have we? No, we've never heard that before. <laughs> you haven't? Are you lying? Does everybody say that? Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's cool. It's just, it's a homie perspective. So I think we are cornering the market on a, uh, exceeding expectation. <laughs> yeah. I think so. And and definitely one of the 
I will, the last thing I'll say is part of, um, you know, my growing experience in all this was, um, well, Hamza just being a, a friend and his perspective, because I just think he's so wise. Uh, but also um, your, you know, the Homies Perspective podcast on ayahuasca and other things. I've listened to your podcast and it's inspired me, you know, to live, you know, you know, outside the norm and to follow my heart and to follow what is I want to do. So yeah. you guys are you guys are making a difference and um, and you helped me too. So. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. You have just been in tune to another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from a Homie's Perspective. This is Hamza. And I'm David. And again, it was a pleasure speaking with you, Leanne. Let's stay in touch. Okay. Thanks, guys. You too. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks again for checking out another episode of Intrinsic Motivation from